Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Tuesday of the 17th week after Pentecost, September 29th, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 25, beginning at verse 1. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me on your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 655 from Lutheran Service Book, Lord, Keep Us Steadfast in Your Word. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who bite his seat or sword. Would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known. For you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. O comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth. Support us in our final strife, and lead us out of death to life. Today's reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, the first chapter, beginning at verse 19. Then we set out from Horeb and went through all that great and terrifying wilderness that you saw, on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said to you, You have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, take possession, as the Lord the God of your fathers has told you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you came near me and said, let us send men before us, that they may explore the land for us and bring us word again of the way by which we must go up and the cities into which we shall come. The thing sounded good to me, and I took twelve men from you, one man from each tribe. And they turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eskol and spied it out. And they took in their hands some of the fruit of the land and brought it down to us and brought us word again and said, it is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. Yet you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, 
He has brought us out of the land of Egypt to give us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where are we going up? Our brothers have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. And besides, we have seen the sons of the Anakim here. Then I said to you, Do not be in dread or afraid of them. The Lord your God, who goes before you, will himself fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness, where you have seen how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet in spite of this word, you did not believe the Lord your God, who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tents, in fire by night and in the cloud by day, to show you by what way you should go. And the Lord heard your words and was angered, and he swore, Not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land that I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him and to his children I will give the land on which he has trodden, because he has wholly followed the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit, that confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into all truth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With great joy, the Holy Church celebrates on this day the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels. We read from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Originally, this was just the Feast of St. Michael, the Archangel. The idea of including all the angels on this day arose among the Anglican Christians and was carried over by English-speaking Lutherans. This was an easy adaptation since Lutherans from the time of the Reformation had used the feast to set forth the biblical teaching on the service of the holy angels to the children of God. The name Michael in Hebrew means, who is like God. 
We first meet this angel by name in the book of Daniel. He appears again in the New Testament in Jude and in the 12th chapter of Revelation. He is depicted as warring with Satan and the fallen angels and serving and protecting the people of God. In church tradition, Michael is most often joined to Gabriel, mentioned in Luke's Gospel, and Raphael from the Apocrypha. These are the latter creatures referenced in the church's great proper preface during the divine service with angels and archangels. On this day, we remember how Scripture relates angels constantly weaving in and out of the gospel itself. An angel announces the impending birth of Christ to Mary in person and to Joseph in a dream. An angel announces the birth of Christ as good news of great joy to the shepherds. Angels sing glory to God and peace on earth on Christmas night. Angels direct Joseph's trip to Egypt and back. Our Lord teaches that the angels who serve the little ones constantly behold the Father's face in heaven. Angels are present at our Lord's passion in Gethsemane. They announce his resurrection on Easter morning. They speak to the disciples at the ascension. They free Peter from prison. They speak to Paul. They long to look into the mysteries that are revealed now through the church's proclamation. We gather with them when we worship. They appear throughout the Revelation to St. John. The Old Testament is as replete as the New Testament with references to them. Their special task regarding believers is given in Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. We remember them in our morning and evening prayers when we pray to the Heavenly Father. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. We ask God to send his holy angels to accompany us along our life's journey and know that in the end of our days, we will join them in singing his praises forever. We pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.